Today's video is all about boots. I've got five of my favorite boot styles that are available right now in 2024. I did my best to maximize the variety with different styles of boots, different types of construction, different leathers and materials. It took quite a few months of planning and preparation and testing and research to get this video ready. I really hope you enjoy it. I had a great time prepping for this and can't wait to get started. First up, we've got the Bitflex Chelsea boot from Astroflex. This was actually my first foray into Chelsea boots, and I have to say, I think they've made me a convert. I've really enjoyed these the past few months. Just a quick background on Astroflex. These are actually handmade in Italy. They've been made by a family-run company for the past six generations since the 1800s. Always really fun to see that sort of thing, but I think because of that, there was pretty limited information online with some of the specifics around this boot. Pricing comes in at $250. This is the dark chestnut nubuck color that I think is still exclusive to Huckberry. Moving into styling, definitely on the more casual end of things here with a slightly wider toe box than average for some other Chelsea boots and this dark chestnut nubuck kind of gives it more of a rugged type of look. They seem to focus mostly on a lot of more traditional type of suede. With the sort of sleeker style and the sole that they chose, we'll get more into that later, definitely a great like warmer weather type of boot for spring and summer. The dark Dark Chestnut Nubuck upper kind of threw me for a loop a bit because Nubuck or suede, you usually think of that sort of fuzzier, sanded off type of feel. This is a pretty smooth finish and texture. I couldn't find anything specific about which tannery the leather came from, but I do really like the kind of more rougher and rugged appearance. It's a good contrast to the sleeker look of the Chelsea boot. The construction was also quite a big mystery to me. There wasn't any information online that I could find, and it kind of looked like a cemented sole, especially at this price point. You know, it's a pretty low price Chelsea boot. Luckily though, Nick from Stridewise did a ton of digging and deep diving and found out it's something called ideal stitching. It's a bit of an offset from stitch down construction, so these are technically still resolable. With that in mind, the Welton construction overall looks pretty good. You know, there are little hints of, you know, imperfections here and there from the handmadeness of these, but overall, really solid and I think some of those imperfections kind of just add to the character and the style of the boot. On the inside you do have a full veg tan leather lining and insole and then you have a leather midsole as well. On the bottom you have something called a crepe sole which is a natural rubber sole. I've never owned any crepe sole boots before but I know they were made really popular at least here in the U.S. with uh, the Clark's Desert Boots a while back. Really soft and squishy and nice. You know the one downside with them is that they do collect a lot of dirt and dust and junk on the bottom, but it does make for an almost sneaker-like softness with still sticking to more natural materials. In large part because of that crepe sole, comfort was pretty great from the beginning and day one. I had a little bit of heel rub on the first few wears, but that settled down very quickly. Overall, an extremely comfortable boot. Uh, getting into my sizing, I'm about a 12 and a quarter Brannock. I have a pretty narrow heel, but a pretty wide toe box and a pretty wide ball of the foot. Uh, these have a really nice big roomy toe box. I got a size 12 in these and they fit great. They offer a size of 7 and 15 but don't have any wide or half sizes. If you're only a little wide, you know, this roomier wider toe box, you might be able to get away with a regular D width, but definitely check and see. Switching over into some pros and cons, I think first and foremost, maybe it's just because I'm biased and a reviewer, I would love to see a little bit more easily accessed public information about the construction and materials here. The only other con worth mentioning is kind of a bonus as well is this crepe sole. You know, it's really nice and comfortable and really great for the spring and summer, but collecting all that dirt and grime, you know, your mileage may vary on how much you like that. It's also not a very good sole to wear in really cold or icy or wet conditions. So definitely more of a warmer weather, you know, drier weather type of boot. Other than that though, I really like these. Like I said, I hadn't had a Chelsea boot before this. I think this made me a convert. I've been wearing and really enjoying these for the past several months. I really appreciate something like this having a little bit more of an almost sneaker-like type of comfort, but still using all natural materials. You know, most boot brands, if they're going for that sneaker type of look, are going to use more synthetics. Uh, they have a pretty heavy focus on environmental things, and I really like the natural rubber sole, and it's still veg tan, and the construction is still resolable, so you get a lot of that sneaker comfort, but you still have a fully, like, resolable leather boot. $250, I think, is a really solid value for 
these. If you want to get something more rugged, you have this dark chestnut new buck, but they do have some, you know, a little more elegant looking suede options too. Moving into our next boot, we have the Grant Stone Diesel Boot in Jungle Kangaroo. Out of everything on the list, I think I was most excited for these just because of the exotic, at least for Americans, you know, exotic leather that's being used here, and they definitely did not disappoint. A little bit of background, Grant Stone is actually based in Michigan. That's where I'm from too, so I always get a little bit of, you know, home state love for the Michiganders. But things get even more interesting the more you deep dive into it. So they're based in Michigan, but all of their boots are made in China. And contrary to the popular stereotype of Chinese manufacturing being cheap and junky, these have a really fun story for the reasoning and purpose for being there. So they're made in Xiaomen, China. The co-founder of the company, Wyatt, actually worked in the same factory for eight years before starting Grant Stone. His father actually used to work with that factory making boots for other companies for a long while. So they have a long-standing family and personal relationship with this factory and that has definitely led to some of the most impressive quality boots I've ever come across. Writing down some of the basics and style, these come in at $390. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward kind of plain toe service boot type of look. It uses Grant Stone's Leo Last, which has a pretty roomy toe box, but it doesn't necessarily look it. You know, for some that needs a really wide toe box and has giant feet. I can always appreciate that sort of thing because it gets real into clown shoe territory very easily for me. I believe this is their most popular boot. They have a ton of different leathers available for it. They have a ton of different Chrome XL options. They have shell cordovan. You know, they have kangaroo leather, antelope, bison, all sorts of crazy things. This one in particular is a vegetable tan kangaroo leather in the jungle color. I really like this green. It's pretty subtle. It definitely gets more green in really bright daylight, but it still works with a lot of different outfits and colors uh, in terms of styling this. I've been pestering all of my family and friends though about this kangaroo leather for the past few months. It is really great. You know, first off, just for an aesthetic purpose, you know, the texture on here just looks incredible. You know, there's a little bit of scarring, you know, kangaroo leather is going to be a little bit more scarred than a traditional, you know, farmed cowhide or something like that. You know, it's pretty minimal, honestly, and was expecting a little bit more when I got it, but it just leads to this really incredible texture. They're also able to use a lot thinner leather and still have similar if not greater strength to it so that kind of leads to a little bit more of a comfortable flexible upper they come with some really nice rawhide laces you have brass eyelets and three speed hooks at the top and as far as construction goes these are a full 360 degree Goodyear welt every boot we're talking about today is definitely able to be resold with their construction style but Goodyear welt is kind of the expected gold standard for the boot nerds out there and definitely the easiest to be able to find a cobbler to resole it. On the inside, you have a kip or calf leather lining that's actually from Wisconsin, and you have a full veg tan leather insole. You have a full grain leather heel counter as well as a veg tan welt and midsole. On the inside, you have a steel shank, and it's filled with cork, which is kind of the, again, the best and expected standard for really well-made boots generally. And for the outsole, you have a micro stud rubber sole. It's actually a house-made one. It looks pretty similar to a day-night sole, but actually made by Grant Stone. Overall quality control and finishings of this boot are absolutely immaculate. It stood out noticeably from day one. Basically no stitches out of place, no issues, no nothing. Even the unboxing experience itself. You have nice cloth bags for each of the boots. You have a cloth that you can lay it down so you can try these out in case you need to return them. You get a little nice bottle opener, shoehorn type of thing, extra pair of laces, just luxurious all the way through, even down to the cardboard box itself. Getting into the comfort, the break-in period was pretty minimal on these as well. I took a little bit of time for this heel counter to kind of soften up and settle in, but this kangaroo leather is just so nice and soft and pliable. It was instantly comfortable. You know, this Leo last feels like it was built for my foot. Uh, so definitely if you have kind of a narrower heel and a wider ball of the foot, you know, bigger toe splay, something like this uh, should fit you really well. I know it is extremely comfortable and nice for me to the point where I actually, since starting production on this video, I picked up a second pair in natural Chrome XL as well probably be talking about those more down the road at some point with the materials that they're using and how quality the overall construction is you know these punch way above their weight class in terms of price you know that's part of why they are made in china they're able to keep the manufacturing costs down a bit but without sacrificing 
any kind of quality. You know, these would easily compete with $500 boots, no problem. I tried really hard to come up with some cons or negatives for these. You know, I just really love them. I think if you're going to get one boot from this list, it would probably be this one. You know, maybe not the green kangaroo leather, something a little more normal, like a brown CXL or something, but... Uh, just overall such a great boot and I think a great introduction into, you know, higher end, better quality boots if you're someone that's kind of been in that lower end of the spectrum for a while like I have. Really quick, I want to give a huge thank you to Anchorwork for sponsoring this week's video and introduce you to their new S600 all-in-one speakerphone. In recent years, more and more people are working from home. I personally love it, but it definitely creates its own set of challenges. Random noises from the street, family members, appliances, pets can all disrupt your meetings and calls. Sometimes you want to be able to just move around more freely and easily or charge your phone without being tied to your desk. That's where the S600 comes in. You have an all-in-one setup with a 360-degree speaker, surprisingly great for mic array with active AI noise canceling, built-in 70 degree adjustable phone stand with a Qi 2 15 watt wireless charger, and voice print recognition to avoid any embarrassment and make sure yours is the only voice coming through on your call. All of this comes in really nice, compact, and aesthetic packages. Well gone are the outdated and industrial looking conference speakers from your old office. They're running some really early bird specials through Kickstarter right now with up to 45% off. It's first come, first serve, so be sure to check the link in the description down below. Huge thanks again to Anchor Work for sponsoring this week's video. Next up, we've got the Helm Hollis boot. This was a newer brand for me that I was unfamiliar with. They started in 2009. They're based in Austin, Texas, and their boots are made in Brazil. The Hollis boot here comes in at $295. Styling on this one is pretty nice and kind of rides the line of dressy and rugged work type of style pretty well. You know, it's a relatively straightforward, you know, cap toe service boot look upon the initial impressions, but then you have, you know, full nickel eyelets with no speed hook. Uh, so that kind of gives it a dressier look, but then you have, you know, a really luggy rubber sole on the bottom, kind of more similar to a work or an outdoor boot. Kind of an in-between that you can dress up a bit or dress down a bit. I actually swapped out the laces to these, you know, more yellowy work laces. I thought it added a really nice contrast and kind of paired well with uh, Helm's signature look, which is this white midsole line through. It's made with Helm's 415 last, which is a little bit of a narrower toe box and kind of narrower shape overall. Again, lending itself to that sort of dressier look, but contrasted with the more, you know, workwear outdoorsy type of additions that they put on here. The upper is a full grain leather from Krumenauer Tannery in Brazil. Uh, they have a few other colors available, but I went with the black one here. Couldn't find a ton of info or specifics about the leather. You know, it's not a super popular, well-known tannery or anything, but the overall leather quality feels and looks pretty good. They use a Blake Rapid Stitch construction, which is kind of a hybrid between a Goodyear welt and a Blake stitch, so you kind of get a little bit of the best of both worlds there. It's more water resistant than a Blake stitch, but a little bit lighter weight than a traditional Goodyear welt construction. Uh, it is still able to be resold, but you know, that Blake rapid stitch is going to be a little bit less common for finding a cobbler. Uh, Helm does have a program where you can get them resold directly through them, but I'm sure there are some cobblers out there that would be able to handle it as well. The welt stitching density is relatively low, but all the stitching on the welt itself as well as on the upper all looks immaculate. Basically no issues at all. You know, the upper construction and the welt both look pretty perfect to me. You have a full leather lining on the interior that feels good, but things definitely start to deviate from there compared to most of the other boots that we're talking about today. You have a pretty thick and hefty foam insole and midsole, so that leaves it to be a pretty like soft and squishy feel very similar to a sneaker. Their signature white midsole look here is a white rubber that's used and then on the bottom you have a pretty luggy you know full rubber outsole here they've made some changes compared to some of the older videos I've seen on these you have full rubber all the way through with a leather heel stack with another piece of that luggy rubber on the bottom for the outsole definitely a blend of the modern and heritage styles here as far as comfort and sizing you know because you have all of that foam on the insole it is a very soft and squishy experience very similar to a softer foam in a sneaker. Break-in period for this was pretty easy and minimal because of all that foam on the bottom. It's pretty soft essentially immediately upon the first wear. I had a couple of issues with hot spots and things due to some sizing concerns for me. I think a lot of this boils down to the somewhat subjective fact that my feet just aren't really quite the right fit for this last. I actually tried at 12 at first and it was much too snug in the toe box. My feet were really crammed in in the toe box so I got a 13 
and the length is perfect, but it's just a little bit too wide for me. I think this would be a really great fit for someone that has a wider midfoot and a wider heel. Now, I have a very narrow heel and a pretty narrow midfoot, but a really wide ball and really big toe splay. Um, so it's just not a perfect match. You know, when I put these on, I have a lot of extra material in this quarter. Um, so it just kind of makes for a bit of an awkward fit. It's still comfortable generally, but the fit's not quite right for my specific foot. You know, I can't really knock it for that. Feet are subjective. From my experience, it seems to fit more like an E or double E width than the midfoot and the heel. Getting into some pros and cons for this one, it was really interesting to think about from a review perspective because I see strong points on either side. The foam and synthetic materials they're using make for a really high level of initial comfort, which I think is great. Over time, though, it's probably not going to have the same longevity as more natural materials, you know, like the cork and the leather and everything like that. I feel like the biggest point here is the pricing, though. You know, at $295, it's in a very awkward in-between sort of market. Um, I think in a $200 to $250 range, these are awesome. I think they're a little bit of a step up from Thursday boots. Those are $200. Um, yeah, I think this would be a great alternative. That being said, at $300 though, you're getting into the realm of Red Wings or Grant Stone like we just talked about. You know, obviously, it's still less expensive than those, but you're just creeping into that sort of bracket and the quality is pretty big difference between this and say the Grant Stone diesel boot where you get a lot better materials and something that'll last a little bit longer for not that much more money. Um, I do know that these go on sale somewhat regularly though. So at a sale price, you know, in that 200 to $250 range, I think the value is definitely there for, you know, a boot novice that still wants some sneaker comfort and doesn't have to deal with, you know, a three month break in period and a lot of the problems that us boot nerds go through. I think there's definitely a market for this where you still want kind of a more heritage classier type of look compared to the more common you know, kind of sneaker boot type of styles that offer something like this. I think they've executed well on what their goal was, but I just think the price point's a little higher than it should be. With all of that in mind though, picking these up on a sale, if your foot is the right shape for them, I think you'd be really happy with them. If our last boots were for the boot novice, these boots are for the full on 100% boot nerd. These are the DB Hunter Cap Toes from Unmarked. I was expecting really good things when I got these, but they really took me by surprise with one specific aspect that we'll be getting into. A little bit of background on Unmarked though, they're based in Leon, Mexico. Leon is unofficially known as the shoe capital of the globe. A ton of different boot brands are there and making boots. Looking at their website, they seem to have ethics kind of at the forefront paying fair wages and using higher quality materials in a way to reduce environmental waste you know, make something well and it'll last a lot longer, that sort of thing. They also have one of the biggest varieties and stylings and offerings on their shop that I've come across, a ton of really unique things, whether it be materials or styles. They also do a lot of work with customizations, which is really cool. So just a really unique company with what they're offering and what they're making. But these are the DB Hunter Cap Toes. They come in at $490. It's tough to fully lock in the style here. It's kind of a brogue derby boot type of look. The upper is made with brown chrome XL from Horween in Chicago, but they do have quite a few other options available as well. You know, in chrome XL, they have black and even navy, but they also have a few local leathers like an olive suede and that uses a wedge sole on that one. Again, just a ton of really cool variety even within this model. I really like this style though because it just has so much presence and it's pretty big and bulky, almost like a work boot. But then it has these nice finishings, kind of like a dressier boot. It definitely rides that line in between. And I think you can really dress it up or dress it down. It's also the tallest boot that we're talking about here today. The shaft is just under seven inches and it's definitely the tallest heel of the bunch as well. You have brass eyelets and speed hooks. On the interior, you have a really nice soft calf leather lining. You have a vegetable tanned insole and midsole. You have this really great brogue detailing on the cap toe. And on the outside, you have a Dr. Soul sole, which apparently have a bit of a cult following. The big differentiator here, these are handmade and hand stitched with yeah hand stitched stitch down type of construction stitch down construction is really popular in a lot of higher end boots i believe nyx does it for that you know pacific northwest work type of boot but the most similar comparison here would probably be viberg much higher price point though for this type of leather and construction from viberg you're probably looking more at like a seven to nine hundred dollar range so on top of the stitch down
down, it's nailed in with brass pegs. Stitch down kind of has its pros and cons. It's typically more water resistant than a Goodyear welt, but it's a little bit harder and more laborious to make, hence the increased cost. It's also a little tougher to find a cobbler that can resole it for you, at least as easily as a Goodyear welt. These being handmade has led to a few imperfections kind of in the overall QC and the stitching. There are a few bits where it's a little sloppier compared to a machine or something. You know, overall, I think it does look pretty good, but you can just definitely tell that it was handmade and, you know, the lack of absolute, you know, computer perfect perfection that goes into it. It's definitely not a problem for me. But if you're super nitpicky, you know, spend the extra $400, get some Vibergs or something. I personally don't mind those little handmade perfections. It doesn't really affect the durability or the quality of the boot overall. And just kind of tells the story that this is something handmade, someone made special for you. I did a subtle tease earlier, but getting into the comfort for these, uh, these were shockingly comfortable just from the very first wear putting them on. I really was not expecting that at all. You know, with these bigger, burlier boots usually comes a pretty big and burly break-in period. Um, I think it might just be the last and the size. They actually made a 12 and a half for me with these. It fits so perfect and this extra height and the shaft really locks your ankles in for that extra support. Really good arch support in here as well. Just the comfort was the biggest shocker and surprise for me. Uh, these are extremely comfortable on top of being really well made and using all the good materials. For someone that needs a lot of tow room like me, uh, plenty of tow room here. It's kind of an oblong type of shape, which you know, looks a little bit different from most other boots. I think it hides the wider toe box look. Again, I hate that you get into clown shoe territory very easily. No wide sizes available on the website, but I do believe if you contact them, they can probably make that for you. They don't actually make a 12 and a half in this by default. Uh, but they were able to make it for me. There's actually a whole custom page on their website. They do a ton of custom type of work. So it's really cool. Kind of adds to that handmade process, the fact that they're going to make something special for you. Going over some of the pros and cons here, you know, if the QC issues are going to bother you a ton, you might just want to spend a little bit extra to get something else. Because it doesn't affect the durability and the quality of the boot, I really don't have any issue with it, but I can definitely appreciate someone spending a lot on boots that wants that absolute perfection, but you are going to pay for it if you want that handmade stitch down type of style. Overall though, just really good value. Uh, these are the most expensive boots in the list and they're definitely not cheap boots by any means, but for the construction and the materials that they're using, I think they're offering a really good value here compared to things that are similarly built with similar styles and similar materials. You know, if you don't really care at all about those nice handmade touches or you're not a full on boot nerd, you know, I think Grant Stone offers a lot, you know, in terms of quality that's going to be very similar. This is a great boot for boot nerds. I think there's just a ton of character here and I love their other lineup of boots too. I'd be curious to try some others down the road. Uh, but just really cool and just such a sleeper for me. I didn't expect for them to be so comfortable. A little bit out of left field compared to some of the others in this list, but I promise some variety. This is the Danner Mountain Mach 917. I had actually been testing the 917 Mach Toe and I'd planned to include that, but in the months leading up to this as I was preparing for the video, uh, I was a limited run and they ran out of stock completely. Uh, this just came out a couple weeks ago and looked really interesting. I haven't had as much time with this as some of the others, but I thought it'd still be fun to talk about. And I've tried a couple of other boots on the long term from the same type of family. If you're not familiar, Danner's actually based in Portland, Oregon here with me. Um, this mountain muck design though is actually kind of a reissue, reimagining of an old 1960s Danner boot that's been discontinued. It's a Huckberry exclusive collab that just dropped. So it kind of combines some of the newer, you know, sneaker boot technologies with the older style, you know, hippie look of the mountain mock from the 60s. These come in at $220, uh, an extremely casual look and vibe. Definitely a Pacific Northwest hippie sort of look here. Um, I know I'll blend in perfectly in the streets of Portland, but you might feel a little bit out of place, you know, at New York City or something like that, depending on your look. It's an interesting blend of kind of a mock toe style, obviously, but kind of a chukka boot shape at its core. So it's kind of a chukka mixed with a mock toe mixed with a sneaker. A little bit more divisive and probably not quite as easy to style as a more traditional type of boot, but definitely works with a lot of casual outfits. And I think this style definitely lends itself to some of the warmer weather for spring and summer. You have a 
combination upper of suede and leather, uh, this bone brown suede that they use. I actually have a regular pair of the 917 logger boots from Danner that are fully made with this bone brown suede. They're a couple of years old. They look great. They're super comfortable. Uh, it's held up really well for me. Underneath that, you have this patch of chocolate type of leather. And on the outsole here, you have this Vibram 917 outsole with some mild but really sticky and grippy lugs. And then this sort of speckled pattern that they use on the 917 outsole, I think kind of lends itself to this more organic-y, hippie type of look that's going on here. It might not seem like it, but these actually are resolable or recraftable, as Danner calls it. Uh, they use what's called a modernized stitch down construction. Um, I think it's a mix of stitch down and cup soles like a sneaker would be. I have to assume you probably can't get these resold at any old cobbler, but Danner does have a program where you can send them in to get resold. So resolable, but most likely only through Danner themselves. Very comfort and adventure focused. This is actually Gore-Tex lined as well, so it's going to be waterproof, you know, up to about this level here. As you'd assume and expect, uh, extremely comfortable from a sneaker point of view. You know, they basically fit and feel a lot like sneakers, especially with the shorter chukka type of silhouette. Sizing is probably pretty standard sneaker sizing. I think I would ideally need a 12 and a half. I actually have um, the Bone Brown 917 logger and a 13. I have these in a 12. These are more snug but still fit and are still comfortable. They offer sizes 8 through 13. No wide options available. Now in terms of pros and cons, uh, it's definitely a bit of a divisive category. I know with the sneaker boots, you know, I personally like it though and think they have their place. You know, sometimes you want something that's built more for outdoor usage. You know, I do a lot of hiking and camping and all of that sort of thing. And you know, I would rather take something cheap like this that's going to have a super grippy outsole and it's going to have the waterproof liner. I would love to see though if they're going to go through the trouble of a Gore-Tex liner on such a short boot, maybe they could gusset the tongue and have it come up to the very top or something because right now you know, it's pretty much just going to be puddle proof. Uh, definitely no level, you know, you only have those couple of inches there. It would be cool potentially for a little bit more of a boot version of this compared to more of on the sneaker side of things to have maybe like a wedge sole and you know good your welt construction or something like that but you're probably going to increase the price and it's not really what they're going for this was very intentionally made for what it is and i can appreciate that really fun design though pretty unique i don't think i've seen anything quite like this you know i like the sneakery luggy type of sole I think it's fun. Uh, it's inexpensive. Definitely a good pickup if uh, if you have the right vibe for your wardrobe for this. That wraps it up for the boots, though. I did want to take a quick minute to mention some sock brands. Um, I was going to flesh this out more, but might save it for a separate video or something. I've been trying to expand out from the darn tufts lately just to see what's out there for some things that might look a little nicer in a normal wardrobe outside of like hiking and camping. Been trying out some socks from Worn and Pekka and American Trench. All have been pretty good for their own reasons. If you want to see more of like a full sock type of breakdown video or something, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. I didn't want to tack on an extra eight minutes onto this video and bore everyone to death, but let me know. I'd love to uh, work on that if you're all interested. Thank you all so much for watching though. Um, like I said, I've been working on this for months. I've been living and breathing boots for so long now, knowing all my family and friends, uh, just because I wanted to really, you know, learn about all of the different styles. I've been in a more like novice intermediate boot category for most of my life, you know, diving into some of these higher end boots. I wanted to make sure and get my facts straight or at least as best as I could. I had a blast though. I really hope you did too. I'd love to hear what boots you've got down below. Uh, I'm probably going to work on some more videos on the topic for later in the year. Maybe we'll see how it goes. Let me know if you're interested. Thanks again for watching though. And I'll talk to you in the next one.